Despite the weak economy, Ford Motor Company says it plans to keep growing. Yesterday unveiling an ambitious plan to increase global sales by 50 percent in just the next five years. CBS News business and economics correspondent Rebecca Jarvis is back to tell us how the company plans to do it uh, and also what this could mean for jobs in the U.S. I mean, a lot of people say, hey, if you're going to increase sales 50 percent, you must need to hire someone. Exactly, and it's a very optimistic expectation for the company. Good morning. Since Ford CEO Alan Mulally took the reins nearly five years ago, the company has streamlined operations and is now producing more fuel-efficient and smaller cars, a plan that's proven very successful. Ford earned $2.6 billion in the first quarter of this year. And in our conversation, Mulally told us they hope to open new plants and that the economy is headed in the right direction. The projections that you just put out are very optimistic. 50% increase in production by mid-decade. Does that to you indicate that the world economy is getting better? The real fundamental is uh, the growth in the Asia Pacific region, in addition to the a little bit slower growth in the more mature markets. This is really about uh, the soul of manufacturing in the United States and us being competitive on a global stage now. You are the one auto company here in the United States that didn't take a government bailout. Your profits have grown since the recession. Are you planning on hiring new people here in this country? Uh, yes. Over the next two years, we're going to be hiring nearly 7,000 uh, new employees. Great careers in design and manufacturing. Do you think more than 7,000 could be hired in the next couple of years? Well, it'll clearly go with as, as the economy comes back and we increase production, uh, then that will determine uh, you know, what we do about further employment. But do you think that the manufacturing could potentially be moving overseas or, you know, the new factory growth is going to be in places outside of the United States? Well, I think that uh, uh, we'll grow everywhere around the world because the markets are all growing. The United States is still a great market, so we'll continue to increase production here. I think we'll see the most growth, of course, in Asia Pacific, where the economy is growing at uh, nearly 10 percent, especially like in China. So uh, we'll continue to expand our operations everywhere in which we uh, sell these great vehicles. Do you think it's safe to say that with this focus on China and on India, perhaps there's a view that here in the United States things still hold a lot of uncertainty? Well, I am very confident that with the fiscal and monetary policy and our attention to economic development in the United States, we're going to get through this recession and keep expanding. More and more people are buying cars in this country, and we've seen it in the numbers. Do you think that for this country, the worst is behind us? Well, this is a slower recovery than we've had in the past, but it is recovering. And of course, we were in a very uh, deep hole with our recession. And I'm very pleased that, we, that everybody's attention is on economic development and growing our economy. But I think it's so important that we all remember that the key to economic development and profitable growth is our competitiveness. And so we, we're going to continue to improve that competitiveness every year. And part of that competitiveness is making more fuel-efficient cars. I talked to Malali about the types of cars we might see more of in the future. He said first hybrid, then electric cars. That's what he thinks in terms of the order of things. And he also said that it's really helped the collective bargaining that he's done with the unions that populate Ford as far as employees go. That has helped them become more competitive as well through concessions and through new negotiations about what they get paid and how much their pensions are. So to allow them to, to pay those workers less, basically. Exactly. That's allowed them to be more competitive. In terms of being competitive, too, we talked about this last week, not just Ford, but the, the big three automakers here in the U.S. have really had to pull back and, and realize that Americans don't want those big cars. They need to make smaller cars like more European cars, more Asian cars. Exactly. 55 percent of Ford's cars are projected to be small cars by the year 2020. And there is a reason that they've been big in the past, and that's because they make more money on the big cars. The reality is they make higher margins on those cars. But they think now that they're expanding to the likes of Asia, that they can make a lot of money by doing it with small cars because that's what they demand there. That's right. And that's what more folks are buying here too. Because exactly. Of as we saw. Rebecca, thanks.